everyone. Welcome to 6-5 on the Road, sponsored by Solidime. I'm Lisa Martin, and I'm very pleased to be joined for the first time in, in IRL, in real life, with Alistair Cook. It's so nice to finally meet you and host with you. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to be here. I've been co-hosting on many things amongst the wider group, but it's great to be here on the uh, 6 Five on the Road. Absolutely. We have a great guest up next. We're going to be talking with Luke Norris, the CEO at Kamiwaza. And I did a little LinkedIn stalking of Luke. And he describes himself as the wearer of white shoes, which I can verify he is wearing white shoes, but also the builder of companies that make an impact. Luke, it's great to have you on 6 Five on the Road. Love the white shoes. <laughs> you are on brand. I'd love to know a little bit about Kamiwaza. I know the name means superhuman, yeah. but help the audience understand what you're doing. I know you're industrializing reasoning, enabling the fifth industrial revolution, making it easier, but that seems like, wow, how do you do that? <laughs> well, thanks. So um, we're really focused on making AI operational and effective at scale for the enterprise. Um, right now, everyone seems to be focused on sort of training models, which makes little sense. It's the big numbers, it's the big processes that are happening. But when you look at what the enterprise is actually doing, they're not training models, they're trying to actually utilize models, affect the way that their operations and services work. So we're building a full stack solution, real turnkey capability, so the enterprise can run private models on private data from cloud, edge, and core. And, and talking about that, what are some of the, the what's just some of the widespread adoption? We talk about Gen AI a lot. We've seen you know, the, the influx of, momentum and acceleration that ChatGPT brought to the world 18 months or so ago. But talk about some of the advanced technologies that you're seeing organizations adopt that you're helping to make easier. Yeah, it, it's amazing. Everybody sort of had this ChatGPT moment and they think of uh, Gen AI as a chat interface. And it it's literally couldn't be worse than that. <laughs> um, the actual sort of evolution of it is an autonomous system uh, typically called agents. And these agents actually can be given a task, they can be given data, and they can operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, literally at superhuman scale and capability. A great use case for uh, a Fortune 500, one of the largest logistic companies in the world. They have over 980 million PDFs, just shy of a billion PDFs. They have every contract, entitlement, invoice, everything that sort of this very large company's done. Gen AI has been able to ingest all of those, understand all their entitlements, put it into multiple formats, put those formats into systems like um, uh, Salesforce, systems like ServiceNow, and move it back and forth. And now they have sort of an oracle of all their purchasing capabilities, and it's running there 24 seven as new service orders land on that file system, it ingests, process, redoes that whole transaction, and it's there for you. And Luke, it, it strikes me that that's an awful lot of work, that if you're building this from, from the beginning, that will be months, if not years, of a, a team of a dozen, two dozen people developing this. Is that the special source that Kamuaza is bringing in, is to take away that requirement for huge numbers of people doing huge amounts of science in every single customer? Yeah, that, that's correct. It was actually 100 people on classic ML AI that was trying to get deterministic, read this, OCR this, and actually understand it and make it. What we brought to it was the ability to have a full Gen AI stack so that you could do the embeddings, you could do the full RAG process, you could actually then run multiple models in that agent structure. Also, the data was partly in the cloud, it was partly in multiple data centers, and it's also at the edge where the actual people are scanning the files in and loading it up to local file stores. So the ability to have one stack across it all that had the same models and a large inference mesh made this work, I kid you not, the very first output took 15 minutes. Wow, that's, that's substantially fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's Gen AI. So it was it was a plethora of models. It was a couple of mixture of expert models, a couple of smaller models, a model that did OCR, uh, sort of optical character recognition, and then actually re-looked at it and said, look, this part didn't come through right. So then it applied natural language to actually fix those characters. But that's literally what the models were actually built for. And once you actually just input the data with an output sort of uh, facilitated, you wanted it in this schema on the output. It was a very quick process. That's awesome. So I was reading a bit about Kamiwaza.ai, and you guys aren't just part of the AI revolution. You say, hey, we're leading this. <laughs> That's a very confident statement. But we talked about your mission being really to empower organizations, enterprises to get ready for the fifth industrial revolution, which is we're on the precipice of. And you want you have some big goals here, and I saw aiming to achieve the unprecedented scale of one trillion inferences per day. That's correct, yeah. How, and talk about the impact, the potential impact that has. So 
roughly a trillion inferences a day, even with the latest GPT-4.0 model, we roughly think would be about $3 billion a day in costs. But when we look at these very large organizations in the Fortune 500, for 20 to 30% of their operations to be fully automated with Gen AI, that's roughly what it's going to take. It's about a trillion inferences. A full agent process, like I talked about earlier, might be about six to 10,000 inference requests to actually run that whole pipeline and have that output and go back and forth. So to get to that level of cost, we're already working with many suppliers, such as like Qualcomm and Ampere, that are going to help drive down the cost of inference. And I can accurately predict over 1,000x in the next six to nine months. How ready are organizations for this kind of volume of inference, volume of data transfer in particular? There's th these files that we're talking about as these vast numbers of PDFs are typically stored on low cost storage that we hope we never have to read back from. But clearly to train from, we're going to need something that's going to help us to, to access that data. Is, are customers ready? You know, I think um, there, there's two folds to that question. I think the best thing that came out of COVID mm -hmm. is the fact that all these organizations had to digitize very quick. We're talking a, a 10 year compression happened in two to three years there. I mean, just absolutely amazing. So for a lot of these organizations, they do have the data in a place. It's probably not the right place. And it's probably not on the fast drives. What actually happens in these large agent processes, like I talked about, is the slowest piece of it is the ingestion of the data in the third or fourth step of RAG. And you're not ingesting just one file. It's typically tens, hundreds of files because the AI system doesn't know exactly which one was the right one, so it keeps adjusting, re-ranking, adjusting, re-ranking. The whole process is slowed down by the data ingestion. So if you want to speed that up, you want to have that data local for latency, and then you want to have it on the fastest drives that can actually input it into the model as fast as possible. What are some of the, the key use cases that you guys are working on now that, that excite you the most from an impact perspective or from a humanity perspective, for example? <laughs> um, I, I think, so, so just at a high level on a humanity, I think this fifth industrial revolution, just like every pre sort of revolution, it's happening so much faster than we actually realize. And as these enterprises move to sort of having 20, 30, 40% of Gen AI actually adopt theirs, I think there's going to be a massive influx in sort of what a standard job is, what a standard sort of role is within a company. But on that other side is going to be finally where sort of humanity starts to get to abundance. It's going to be so much cheaper to produce goods. It's going to be so much faster to produce innovation that I'm just trying to push the whole industry and the whole world to that level just that much faster. And where are where is Kamiwaza on the journey? Obviously, we, we talk about all these things as journeys, the, the enterprise, the journeys that they have to go through. But talking about what you guys are aiming to do and really redefine the boundaries of what AI can accomplish, mm -hmm. where, from your seat, is Kamiwaza on that journey to c accomplish that mission? <laughs> so I think we, as a company, we're, we're, we're at the precipice. We're ready. We're already having great out outcomes with very large enterprises. What's amazing about this uh, uh, technology, Gen AI, this fifth industrial revolution, is it's the large enterprise that's the early adopter. They have the resources, and they actually have the FOMO of not missing out on this journey. They know if uh, one logistics company, if the other logistics company of similar size adopts it quicker, they're going to be off to the races at an uncatchable speed. Yeah. So these enterprises are putting the resources in to make that adoption. And I think the enterprise people were saying it's going to be 18 to 24 months. I'd say let's compress that to six to nine months because the boardrooms are putting the investments in place to do this now. And I'm just going to ask you, where is that conversation happening? You just mentioned the board. So this is C-suite level. This is board level imperatives. Yeah, this is this is posted on 10Ks to the public market, board-driven initiatives. They're letting the people know that they're investing into it, and it's trickling down through these companies extremely quick. And a lot of the value proposition for Kamuwaza is to be even faster at that, to not be the six months, but getting down to the two and three months towards yeah. delivering value. This is So it's twofold. We have an opinionated stack, so it works through a Docker image right out of the gate. All 25 packages from open source and, and sort of private enterprise technologies that we built to deploy that same package, cloud, prem, and edge. And that really does help speed it up instead of them making all the selection processes and vetting processes associated with that. Third is we branched out past just NVIDIA to Qualcomm and Intel and um, so many other vendors to lower that inferencing cost, make that technology work across the stack. So as these new features and functions come out, the enterprises can adopt them in their natural process. And then the bottleneck is just on the business process. How fast can they adapt? And back to the boardroom and they're driving it, the business is adopting it quickly. 
Talk a little bit about the partner ecosystem that you've built there. You mentioned a number of partner names already, but obviously the, the, the depth and the power of the partner ecosystem is critical. Enterprises want that partnership, but just give us kind of a, a, a snapshot of your overall partner strategy. So, you know, we're really focused on, as I said earlier, driving the cost down 1,000x in the next six to nine months and then well beyond that. And the innovation has so far been just on that training-centric side of Gen AI, and it's just now transferring to the inference side. Um, literally, the graphics cards and the processors were built on technologies for video games. They're finally now coming out with very specific processors and, and capabilities for inferencing. So we're trying to expand that greatly. The other thing that we're trying to work with is all the enterprise storage providers and enterprise services because you have to have this mass amounts of data. We're talking petabytes and exabytes of data interact with LLMs and Gen AI in a net new way. It's not just a data pipeline anymore, it's actually a data notification and what I mean by that is new data lands, data changes, it has to notify Gen AI so it can reprocess, be aware of the latest updates of that data so that its outcomes are up to speed for the enterprise. And that's the important thing about the retrieval augmented generation, the RAG methodologies, is you can in real time update yeah. streaming data in and have that decision informed by much more up-to-date data than you can by doing the fine tuning of a larger model. Yeah, absolutely. Fine tuning processes, even continuous fine tuning processes, which is sort of cutting uh, edge art, still has a massive lag. It also actually, a lot of new research is saying that that uh, can actually cause unintended hallucinations because you're changing all these weights and stuff that we truly don't understand in these incredibly large models. But with RAG, you're feeding it the actual data for it to infer off of. Therefore, it's the precise lingua franca of an enterprise of actual data that they've looked at, so the output is directly referenceable to that, therefore you actually get the result. And that, when you work with enterprise storage vendors to make sure that you have the full data access, the full speed, and that pipeline, you can literally achieve that in real time. And that's that referenceability that makes this much more applicable to more regulated, more controlled enterprise environments, rather than just creating a chatbot where the answer is disposed of nearly as soon as it's given. Yeah, once again, in an in a, in a agent workflow, you get to you know, 80, 90, 90% accuracy uh, of mass amounts of data, there's no way a single human would be anywhere near that. I mean, this is truly superhuman capabilities, hundreds of millions of data inputs, and it's 90% accurate on what it actually processes. It will change all process and procedures of an enterprise. It is truly sort of the game changer. I can see why you chose the name Kamiwaza, the superhuman. <laughs> you talked about regulated industries. I'm wondering in our final minutes here, so are you seeing regulated industries as more of early adopters. I, obviously, every industry is going to be taking this up, but what are you seeing there in terms of any verticals or industries that are really on the fast yeah. track? I, I think it's counterintuitive. The regulated industry is the fastest adopter. They actually have the guardrails already set up in all of their process and procedures, which are easy to map to Gen AI services and solutions. And that process and procedure that was baked inherently, the data processes that were baked inherently are very easy to port over to Gen AI. Also, the regulators want that uh, consistency. Gen AI is gonna give you that 90, 98, 99% consistency of a process that, like I said, a human can't do at scale and speed. Where do you want to point our audience to go learn more about Kamiwaza, what you guys are doing, and, and the impact that you're clearly already making? Uh, I, I would just look at uh, kamiwaza.ai, uh, obviously our website, um, but uh, we're active across all social media channels, especially LinkedIn, uh, and obviously you guys do a great job and we follow you. Yes, excellent. Luke, it's been great to have you on the program. The wearer of white shoes, the builder of companies that clearly make an impact. I think we broke both of those down pretty well today. Thank you for joining Alistair and me on the program. <laughs> Thank you, too. We appreciate it. For our guests and for Alistair Cook, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching 6-5 on the Road, sponsored by Solidime.